Hey there. Did you know that over 70% of adults in the United States use social media daily? That's a staggering number, isn't it? And get this. Studies have shown a significant rise in anxiety, depression, and loneliness among these users. Surprised? It's a growing concern that we need to address. Let's dive into this. Social media has become an integral part of our lives, but it's not all likes and shares. While it connects us to friends and family, it also has a darker side that we often overlook. Today, we're unpacking the impact of social media on mental health, and we've got some valuable insights from Dr. Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist from Stanford University. His research sheds light on how our brains are affected by constant social media use. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. First, let's talk about the problem. More people are reporting feelings of anxiety and depression, and there seems to be a strong link to social media use. You might have noticed it yourself, that sinking feeling after scrolling through your feed. It's not just you. This phenomenon is widespread and affects people of all ages. Research shows that the more time people spend on social media, the more likely they are to feel lonely and isolated. It's a paradox, isn't it? Something designed to connect us can make us feel more alone. So, why does this happen? Social media can distort our perception of reality. We're constantly comparing our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Those perfect vacation photos, flawless selfies, and success stories create unrealistic expectations. This comparison trap can severely impact our self-esteem and mental health. It's easy to forget that what we see online is often a curated version of reality. People tend to share their best moments, not their struggles. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy and low self-worth. Now, let's get to the heart of it. Dr. Huberman's insights offer some hope. He suggests that setting boundaries is crucial. Limit your screen time, curate your feed to include positive and uplifting content, and take regular breaks. It's about creating a healthier relationship with social media. He suggests that setting boundaries is crucial. Limit your screen time, curate your feed to include positive and uplifting content, and take regular breaks. It's about creating a healthier relationship with social media. It's not about quitting social media altogether, but using it mindfully. Being aware of how it affects you and making conscious choices can make a big difference. Huberman also emphasizes the importance of real-world connections. Spend more time engaging in face-to-face -face interactions. These real connections can provide the emotional support that digital interactions often lack. To wrap it up, social media isn't inherently bad, but it's important to strike a balance. Understand its impacts, set boundaries, and prioritize your mental well-being. Before you go, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. How do you manage your social media use? What strategies have worked for you? Also, check out our other videos on health and well-being. We cover a range of topics that can help you lead a healthier, happier life. And if you're looking for ways to manage stress, visit velvetandme.com for stress relief coloring products and more. These tools can be a great addition to your self-care routine. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself.